All right, uh, so I'm going to call this meeting to order. Uh, so first thing is to review and approve the agenda. And I have um, one uh, change to make, if it is okay with everybody, um, which is um, this item number 11, uh, the Land Conservation in Berlin Pond Watershed. If we could move that up to um, after the complete streets appointment. So after we do the appointments, if that is any, any objections to that. Okay. Um, so just a reordering there. <clears throat> Any other uh, comments on the agenda? Okay, so with that, we'll consider the agenda approved. Um, on to general business and appearances. So this is an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council on a topic that is otherwise not on our agenda. Uh, and if uh, you would say your name and where you're from and uh, try to keep your comments to two minutes. Uh, that would be excellent. Um, and all of those other things apply. Your name, where you're from, in two minutes um, applies to if you do have a comment related to an agenda item, which you can make um, when we get to that item uh, as the evening goes on. Um, and I see we had listed the, the quirky pet as uh, potentially wanting to comment, but they are not here. Yeah, they had asked. Or unless. Um, they're online, but um, Cameron, I'll let you check that. I do not see them online. Okay. Um, well, knowing that uh, he got in touch uh, ahead of time, we can see if he, um, and Richard makes his way back here. Uh, but otherwise, any other comments? Uh, Steve Whitaker. Uh, Public Restrooms Committee still has not met. Uh, we have an urgent uh, need. I, as I've mentioned, uh, I don't have a copy of an op-ed I recently wrote. Might see it this week. I'd be happy to email it. Uh, people defecating on the path. I came into city manager's office. They did nothing about it. Uh, Mary said that they would need uh, biohazard suits to uh, take care of crap on a multi-use path. Um, City Hall bathrooms and transit center are our most obvious and immediate. Uh, the transit center lease is not being enforced. They got millions in federal money. Uh, there's no reason at all to not insist they open those bathrooms from 11 to 2 while we negotiate extended hours staffed by city. Uh, Girton Park has been permitted. It doesn't go in, move has been permitted. It doesn't go into effect until the 29th. It was power washed, I noticed today, but they didn't power wash the surrounding asphalt where all the human waste is. So this place still smells like a urinal and there's stains and food and grease and grime on the concrete. It's just, I don't know who did it or why they did a half, a, a, um, half effort job on it. Uh, Girton Park was permitted with, for a five foot asphalt path from Main Street sidewalk to the shelter on a gravel pad. And the art installation went in yesterday and it precludes the five foot asphalt path. So uh, this is an example of how we do business here. Um, we were told in homelessness task force city hall elevate city hall bathrooms would require thousands of dollars in retrofit for gates across elevators, etc. I inquired at a public records request. Where's the backup for that? I got a memo that said, or an email that said, there is no backup. It was a meeting with the assessor. I talked to the assessor. No such estimates were ever made. So basically an impediment to the easiest, most traditionally available and cheapest solution to downtown bathrooms has been blockaded through staff. Uh, uh, let's just, I, I won't even characterize it. Um, Public records request to cut public safety authority. Uh, I made a request on the 14th for records that are essential to back up the document that y'all will be reviewing at the next meeting. Uh, Dan was the essential and trusted entity on that board, but I'm being stonewalled uh, through lack of staff or whatever. Public records law applies no matter what. This council appoints the members to that, two of the members to that. You have a vacancy you need to fill. But it's not okay to tolerate one of your council members 
obstructing public records access when it regards to uh, an authority that we are an integral part of. Similarly, I asked Jack to, to pull the uh, consent agenda, which is marked for discussion item of the contract with CapWest dispatch off of the consent agenda because it is marked for discussion and it is integrally tied in with the work of CVPSA. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, anyone else? And anyone online? Okay. All right, so uh, we're gonna move on then to the consent agenda. Um, bunch of items on there this week. Um, any uh, motion? Uh, Jack, go ahead. I would, <clears throat> I would ask that we take the uh, item A off the consent agenda. I see, I noticed that it's uh, marked as for uh, executive session and I'm curious if there's something that we should no, there's no. I mean, it's just it's just a renewal of the prior terms. It's not need an executive session is it needed or discussion. Those, okay, so we put it on the the uh, on the consent. I withdraw my request from that then, and I'm happy with it. Donna, on the same item, I have some edits. There's no substantial change. I can pass it on to Capital Bar and Monthly Affairs Department. <coughs> Small change. Uh, Jack, do you have okay. Um, all right, uh, Jack. Move the consent agenda. Further discussion. Or, second. Oh, the second, thank you. Further discussion. Okay, um, just checking. Okay. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, and opposed. Okay. All right, so we have a number of appointments to make uh, this evening. So, um, to, uh, one to the um, Montpelier Energy Advisory Committee to the Community Fund Board and one to the uh, Complete Streets Committee. <laughs> and I know that we um, uh, have at least one candidate here from uh, one of those three committees or candidates for one of those three committees. Uh, and so Cameron, just checking, uh, do you see Maraid or Jeffrey online? I do not unless they're on someone else's name, so. Okay. All right, um, so at this point, um, Tim, if you are up for introducing yourself to the council and tell us about your interest in joining uh, the Energy Committee. Can I move that to the mic? Sure. Uh, thank you all. Um, my name is Tim Favorite. Uh, I've lived in Montpelier for approximately seven years. Um, been interested in you know doing my part to fight you know climate change for a while now. Um, when you know when I first became a homeowner, uh, we had the ability to install solar panels, weatherize our house, um, all that good stuff. Uh, but you know, I, it's I think I, I feel like it's time for me to take another step beyond that. And so uh, this this opportunity came up, and uh, I'm excited to to possibly help out. Great. Any questions for Tim? Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. And just checking in with you again, Cameron, do you see uh, Maraid or Jeffrey? Okay. Uh, Jack. Pursuant to 1 BSA section 313A3, I move that we go into executive discussion uh, session to discuss the appointment or of a public officer with regard to items uh, Five, six, and seven on the agenda. I'll second it. Okay, there's motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. All right, so we are going to head into executive session. Uh, so we, I'm going to leave this open because I can, because we're all here. We don't have to take mm -hmm. digitally anyone into executive session. So, um, yes, Cameron. Oh, is it? Yeah, sure. For some reason, it's denied me the ability to do that, but those are the mayor. Wow, <laughs> that is amazing. Is that better? It's not better? Okay, so I just didn't join the audio, so I'm going to join the oh, audio. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. No problem. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs>
where like it's like I see myself, but then I'm also in the background and there's like a delay. <laughs> that would be amazing. Sorry. That has nothing to do with anything. All right. Oh, Jack, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Second. Okay, for the discussion. Uh, okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. All right, and uh, is there a motion? All right, ahead, I'd like Tony. to move. We appoint Tim Favorite to the Energy Advisory Committee, Mairead Harris to the Community Fund Board, and Jeffrey Batista to the Complete Streets Committee. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Great. Thank you. We are um, so delighted that you have put you all have put your names forward for this and uh, thank you in advance for for your time and energy um, uh, towards these uh, committees. All right, um, so we are we had moved up an item the land conservation in Berlin uh, around Berlin Pond um, and for that uh, Christine Zaki is here and uh, is going to give us a, an update. And yeah, you can. Um, <clears throat> Does that work for you, Cameron? Right. Okay. Great. So, Christine Zaki, um, President of Montpelier, thank you so much for squeezing me onto the agenda, and also you are very kind to move me up. Thank you. Um, so, I'm here today because we have an exciting opportunity before us to augment the land that the City of Montpelier owns around the fringe of, of Berlin Pond in order to protect the water quality um, of the water that we drink every day. Um, so there is um, approximately 40 acres that has been subdivided into four parcels um, that is on the market right now. Um, a conservation buyer has bought one of those parcels. The other three remain um, vulnerable. And these parcels contain um, wetlands, brooks that are a conduit for our drinking water, and they the parcel directly abuts land that the city of Montpelier already owns. Um, so my hope tonight, on behalf of a community group that is working to conserve these parcels, is to ask city council to um, express your willingness to have the city own those parcels should we be able to conserve them. Um, and I did send out a um, some information in advance. I apologize for the confusion about agenda items in that email. Um, I do have a parcel map here in hard copy if you're interested. And I also have hard copies of that letter of support as well, if anybody would like those. And I made extra, assuming that this is just a yeah. What's your rough control? Okay. No, that's okay. And I know that you squeeze me on last minute, so I don't want to take up a lot of your time. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, so we are trying to move quickly because the parcels are on three out of four of the parcels are on the open market right now. So, you know, they could be bought, you know, somebody could make an offer tomorrow. Um, and, um, any funding source that might be interested in making a grant to support the purchase of one of these, of these parcels is going to want to know what the takeout is. Like who's going to own the land eventually. Right. And so given the hope that the city of Montpelier would own this land, having an expression of support from the city tonight would allow us to move forward and know that, you know, ultimately the city is willing to own the land and we can, we can um, articulate that to funders so that they can feel confident about funding decisions as well. And so that's the letter of intent, that's in, the letter of support that's included. Is it actually commit the city to buy it or that it's willing to look into buying it? Yes. And so I tried to word this cautiously because 
we don't have control of the land right now. So I cannot come to you right now and say, you know, there's 40 acres, this is the price tag, this, right? So I, I, I can't say that right now because they're still in the market. But in order to move forward, we need to have some indication of willingness to seriously consider owning the land. So the, and you know, please feel free to give feedback on this, but I try to um, word this letter of support cautiously. So it, uh, the language in here says, uh, uh, welcomes the opportunity for ownership. It doesn't commit the city to owning these parcels. Uh, Jay and then Connor. Um, I guess, yeah, I, I mean, I love the idea and, and support it. I'm trying to uh, parse the difference between buying it and owning it. So, you know, you're talking about the city owning it and, you know, Don asked about the city buying it. So the question is, you know, if, are you are you actively looking for people to purchase or, or to whether it's individuals or grants or whatever it might be to fund the purchase of the land and then the city taking ownership and managing or are you, are you asking about the city purchasing the land? That's what I'm not clear about. Yeah, exactly. So the um, the assumption has the assumption that we have been making and maybe we're wrong is that it's going to be easiest to purchase the land and move it into city ownership if um, uh, you know if perhaps another nonprofit entity or a conservation buyer were to buy it quickly and take it off the market and then work to get it into city ownership right and so the the goal the hope here is that the city will be willing to assume ownership of this land what I'm guessing though is that in order to get these parcels off the market it might be necessary to have, for instance, like a conservation nonprofit or a conservation buyer buy those parcels soon and then convey them to the city. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. But yeah. I mean, I guess the other alternative is the city could say, oh, no, no, no. We would love to, for instance, bond to purchase these parcels and buy them directly ourselves. Even so, a that it's a long term process. And so short term, I think it's a long term prospect. Yeah. Yes, right. And so, you know, in order to secure these parcels as even an option for us, I think what we're looking at is getting, you know, getting either an option, getting a conservation buyer, yeah. or getting, you know, a, a nonprofit to purchase them in the short term and convey them to the city. Well, certainly somebody who, you know, an option is our is a short term, but then if somebody's willing to commit to purchasing them, then then we can talk about conveying them into, you know, city how the city how they would fall into management of the city. So I think that that makes sense. I understand that there's, you know, a, a bunch of different scenarios, but I think that uh, I'm concerned if if it's we're it's a different conversation if we're asking to you know the city to you know to fund the purchase. It changes mm -hmm. things. So, right. I yeah. mean, if you wanted to volunteer that, that would be amazing. <laughs> Please feel free to speak up. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> as the assumption that easy, was that that yeah. was probably yeah. not going to be the case. Yeah. <laughs> right, go ahead, Connor. Oh, yeah, just along the same lines. Who was the entity that bought the first parcel there? Yeah, so um, it's a, a local a, a local couple. Um, they actually live um, near Berlin Pond in the summer. They live in Pennsylvania in the winter. Um, and this whole parcel is part of the historic Crandall Farm. And the couple who bought the um, single parcel are descendants of those that that family, as are the people selling the remaining parcels. This descendant felt really strongly, especially given that the parcel that she bought is the uh, southernmost parcel closest to the city, very wet, felt really strongly about conserving it and trying her best to make sure it gets into city ownership. So that's why it's 40 acres total subdivided into four parcels. One of the four has been bought. The other three are still in the market. Thank you, Chrissy. Mm -hmm. well, I do see that we have a hand up from someone online. Uh, Nat Shamba, go ahead and unmute yourself. And yeah, we'll hear from you. Hi, good evening. My name is Nat Shamba, and I'm uh, calling on behalf of the Berlin Pond Watershed Association, which is the uh, 
nonprofit group that's been started up recently to help preserve and protect Berlin Pond and the natural communities around it. And uh, one of our members is the individual that Christine was just talking about, uh, who has bought a piece of the property. If if you have the time, I can share my screen and show you uh, a little bit about where the property is so you get a little bit of context. But I don't know if you have time for that. Um, we, if, uh, what do you think, Council? Would you, would you appreciate seeing that? Or we we are gonna have that um, digital. Uh, you're gonna make photocopies for us. Um, I can. I have maps I can share. Yeah. yeah. If you have enough copies there, so I think we might be good now. Well, it would show the the context of where this property is compared to the pond and. Sure. Because it's aerial photos of the property. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. That would okay. be, that way, everyone, um, the public can see it as well. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay, so. A ton of time, so. Uh, right, I'll be very quick. So the picture on the right there is Berlin Pond. Uh, north is to the top, which is where the Fish and Wildlife Access is. South is to the bottom, which is the inlet, uh, where the culvert is. And um, if you look at again at the pond, this is the piece of land we're talking about. The This is the inlet coming into the pond at the south end. This piece of property slopes down into the wetland that Montpelier owns and it abuts the inlet. So it's basically, if you if you know the area, it's the place where there's a little parking spot. Uh, if you wanna walk around the pond, it's by the culvert there. So that's the piece of land that's for sale. It's 40 acres. You've got a picture of this. Lot four is the one that's been bought by one of our members uh, who wanted to make sure it didn't get built on, uh, but they don't want to own it in the long run. Uh, the other three lots each are building lots. So if this, if these get sold, that would be three new houses right on the uh, abutting almost the, the wetland uh, that Montpelier owns. So again, the culverts right here, Berlin Pond is here. This is the, the open marsh that Montpelier owns. The gray area is all wetland cedar swamp in this property. Uh, this is the land that Montpelier owns currently around the pond. And that's the piece that's on the market right now. So it would add that amount to your, uh, your property if you were to choose to acquire it one way or another. And, uh, we at the Berlin Pond Watershed Association think that that is the best and wisest end goal for this project is to have Montpelier own it in whatever way that can be done. And we will do anything we can to help you make that happen if you choose to work towards that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That was Thank actually you. very helpful. <laughs> um, great. So... Um, as far as motions go, Bill, um, yeah, go ahead. So if, based on what Christine was saying, and if, if you're interested, I think you could make a motion that said you authorized the manager to sign a letter of support and that um, the council would be willing to consider ownership of the property uh, in the future if that were necessary. And that puts it on the record that we're interested in that. I can make that motion. Exactly what you said. Okay. <laughs> that worked for John Odom. And that works for you, Christine. Um, is there a second? A second. Okay. Uh, great. So there's a motion and a second. Any further conversation? Okay. Um, okay. Great. <laughs> all right. Uh, so there's a motion and a second. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Thanks for bringing this to our attention. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. We are on moving on to uh, the encampment policy. And so for this, I believe I am turning things over to Cameron. <laughs> so I don't have anything extra to bring you today, excepting what the park had um, 
the Parks Commission had stated about the uh, policy that you had. Um, the last draft was from uh, Dan Richardson and the Parks Commission met last night. They asked for the following um, amendments to the draft. They asked that the word substantially be removed on page three under environmental protection factors. Basically, the idea there was that if there was substantial damage that wasn't uh, kosher, the idea is to make sure that there's no damage, um, making sure that we add the Parks Commission on the list of city staff and Conservation Commission for um, asking them if, if they could weigh in on any decisions. And then um, again, removing the word substantial before impairment of a natural resource. So all of those edits are on the same page on page three. And that's the feedback that I have on the policy that we've discussed a few times. And so they were otherwise okay with this draft? I wouldn't say they endorsed it. Okay. Um, but those but were the changes. these were the amendments that they asked okay. for. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, all right, um, I give an opportunity for public comment at this point. Uh, go ahead, Stephen. Um, I was at the Parks Commission meeting last night, and they, a, a motion to support the policy failed. Uh, it was a tie vote, and it failed for lack of a tiebreaker. Um, so they did not support the policy. Uh, they did have some discussion about whether, and I contributed to this, about whether adopting this policy which guides and encourages a uh, city to seek out and report uh, whether that not that's going to drive uh, people further and increase the waste and litter uh, and whether or not uh, creating incentives like facilities that would cause campers to consolidate or aggregate around facilities might be a more prudent approach. But that's work that the task force has not done. And uh, so I think this policy on its own uh, does nothing but further drive. It guides city action, but it creates this kind of whack-a-mole where the folks that are affected are unaware of it meaning. So they it's trial and error, get moved, get moved, get moved, which is disruptive and uh, unkind to the uh, affected vulnerable population. So uh, the city still hasn't reckoned with what it did to Casey and his stuff. So uh, I won't waste my breath on this topic. Yep, go ahead. Hello, my name is Seth Collins and I live in Berlin, Vermont. And uh, recently I, I um, was visiting Burlington and the Burlington, of course, has a larger uh, city hall park, so it might not be applicable here. But Burlington has uh, constructed a, um, a like a public restroom facility with a, a water fountain, hand washing station, and uh, someone comes in and resupplies toilet paper, you know, in the evening. So I don't know if this is possible here, but potentially something similar like that could be done in concert with uh, some sort of a you know, public camping site. Of course, in Burlington, the the sort of tent area is a bit out of town, so it isn't necessarily next to the, the isn't necessarily next to the public bathroom. But the public bathroom ends up serving a, a lot of other people. For instance, if people are underage and can't go into the bars to use those facilities, they can end up using this one. So something similar. I'm just proposing that something similar be adopted for Montpelier. Thank you. Thank you, Seth. And uh, yeah, just to note, we are hopefully moving towards some um, public restrooms. So yeah, for sure. Um, all right, and anyone uh, online wish to speak to this or in person? <laughs> okay, I'm not seeing anyone. Um, comments from council, Jack. Thank you. Um, a couple of months ago, when, we, uh, when this was before us, uh, I made the suggestion to Cameron that we include a statement in this uh, policy to uh, provide uh, 
naloxone and uh, training for the city employees who, whose work potentially brings them into contact with people at risk of opioid overdose. And I wonder if, uh, if you think that should be part of this policy or if it's, it's being uh, addressed otherwise within in, internally. Went through a training with our CJC um, staff on naloxone and how to do that through VT Cares. We are working towards getting that training to our park staff and our other community services staff, like our um, senior center and our recs department as well. So that is in the works. I don't necessarily want to tie any staff who might be uncomfortable with that since that's not typically part of their work duty. So I don't know if I would recommend putting in any policy. But so far, all of our community services staff have uh, indicated that they would like to receive that training. So when BT Cares does that training with an organization, they do give us life-saving naloxone kits. I'd like to see that uh, provided to other employees, like probably public works employees, because they're out there all over the city. And uh, you know, so they, there's no telling. I know the police and fire have it, uh, but we don't want to make people wait for a call to the police or fire department because it could be too late. That is a good point. Thank you. And I'll ask BT Cares if they can upscale that training for us. Thanks. Uh, Connor. Yep. Uh, I, I mean, I agree with, with what's been said. This does nothing to address the root cause of homelessness. That said, I, I think it does provide um, guidance to city staff, which was the original intent when Cameron drafted this in the first place. Um, I think the, the debate has been absurd on this. It's uh, been on the front page of the paper. We've seen like two or three tents in Hubbard Park. And it's, uh, you know, caused a rigorous and unnecessary debate in many ways. But on the other hand, it's like raised awareness on homelessness and brought many people to the table to start discussing solutions. So in that case, um, I, I think it is good. Um, homeless, or the uh, Parks Commission went from, um, you know, saying that, Camping shouldn't be done in any park, I think, to offering these suggestions, which isn't a full endorsement of it, uh, but I think it's a reasonable compromise to adopt what they've suggested by taking substantially out of there um, and accepting the policy. So I thought we were kind of all on the same page last week, and uh, I'd make a motion to accept the policy as drafted. With the changes, With the changes from the Parks Commission. Parks Commission. And, oh, so there's a motion and a second. Um, Okay. Any, uh, yeah. Any further? Anything further? Go ahead. Yeah, I just um, got this week got a call from. Uh, <laughs> I assisted a woman who, uh, a homeless woman who, uh, was been camping up at the backside of the uh, cemetery, in areas that were not paths, were not roads, were not plots. Uh, but I understand that they've been uh, trying to eject her in recent days. And uh, I don't have the full details. Somebody may who's nodding their head, but uh, the fact that we may be somebody may be trying to outrun the adoption of this policy uh, at at the expense of a homeless person who's been camping up at, on the right, near right next to the rock wall adjoining Alan Goldman's property. But as I understood, the po cemetery commission had basically just set the groundwork that as long as you're not on the paths, the roads, or the plots, that that public land was campable. So I think that the lack of shelter is an urgent need that this council has not been willing to address. And I don't know what it's going to take to uh, force that issue, but it's the, by providing shelter, you alleviate this need for uh, opening up the public lands, which is what, and I share the park's concern, watching the city's inability to address Confluence Park or Girton Park and the mess that's been made and has been persisted for month after month after month with no cleanup uh, tells me we shouldn't allow, we should do everything in our power to prevent opening up our parks, our pristine parks to camping. And instead we're going the other way. We're saying here's an invitation <laughs> to come camp wherever you can get away with it. And we'll clean up after you. Well, I know damn well, we're not going to clean up after them. Thank you. Um, and I see, oh, did you have a comment? Okay, I see we have a, um, 
a hand up from Emma Zavez. So uh, Emma, go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, yeah, welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, and I joined late to this meeting, so I apologize if it's already been discussed. Um, I was under the impression based on the, the agenda items and the memo that the parks had been um, added to the high sensitivity areas list, which would um, discourage people from camping in the parks. Um, and maybe I'm under a false impression because I'm a little confused now based on what the previous person said. Um, but I guess overall, I just wanted to express my concern about criminalizing or discouraging people from um, uh, being able to camp and reside on public lands if they don't have any other place to go. Um, I think it's really important that our community be welcoming um, and try to do the best that um, we can to support individuals who are struggling. Um, and I don't think that um, kicking them out of these spaces uh, is going to um, further that aim, essentially. Um, so I would absolutely be in support of people being able to um, camp in the parks and in other public lands. Um, I don't think it will have a horrible impact on dog walkers or other people who use the parks. I use the parks. <laughs> I would welcome um, that additional use of the parks. There's plenty of land. Um, so anyways, <laughs> thank you for, for listening. And I hope that that hasn't already been said or maybe already discussed. I apologize for my tardiness. <laughs> no worries. Um, thank you, Emma. And just to clarify, this uh, version of the document does not have a uh, high sensitivity area section in it, uh, but rather it uses criteria uh, to determine whether or not um, someone ought to, um, uh, should not be camping in a particular uh, location. And so uh, that's, uh, so the, the current draft, uh, you know, addresses issues of um, uh, where there's public safety issues or if there's environmental concerns, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, yeah, so hopefully that's helpful. The new draft is on the city website on our agenda for the eve for this evening. Um, so hopefully that helps clarify it a little bit. Anybody else want to jump in on that to clarify? Okay. All right. So there has been a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Um, I don't see any other hands online. Um, that is also still welcome. Or in person. Okay. All right. Um, so motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay. So the motion passes. Um, and uh, thank you, Cameron, for all your work on this. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Um, all right, so we are up to the strategic planning. Um, you might want to suggest that you do the local housing. I was actually wondering. I was <laughs> meant to ask. Yeah, anyway, um, so if it's OK with you, Cameron, um, and council, I, we're going to flip flop these two agenda items and do the local hazard mitigation plan adoption uh, right now, um, which I, I think will makes sense for us. <laughs> Strategic planning is a little more of a creative right. uh, space. So <clears throat> that makes sense. I assume, uh, so is this also you, Kim? Oh, it is also me. Oh, it's just my a goodness, me show. it is also you. OK. All night. <laughs> All right, I may just actually move over to John's seat so I can let me pick him up first. <laughs> sure. OK, so tonight we have in front of you um, the option to uh, adopt, and our recommendation is to adopt our 2021 update to our local hazard mitigation plan. What I'm going to talk to you about tonight is what is a local hazard mit mitigation plan, why it's important, what steps we did as the city over the past year, because it has been a full year process to get this done, um, what outreach we did and what the product was. Hopefully, I know maybe you didn't read the whole 172 pages of it, but it is a pretty robust document. So I am very pleased with where we ended up. And so I'm looking forward to talking about it. So that is annoying. <laughs> um, well, I'm just gonna go with it and I hope that the folks at home will be able to see it, right? Okay, good, great. 
So a local hazard mitigation plan is a plan that forms the foundation of a community's long-term strategy to reduce disaster losses. So after a flood, what are we doing before a flood to make sure that the damage is lesser? So it really tries to break the cycle of damage reconstructed and reconstruction and then repeated damage. So what we're trying to do is mitigate the impacts of a disaster. So what we really try to do in a hazard mitigation plan is identify risks and vulnerabilities in our area and what affects Montpelier the, the greatest. And once we identify those risks, we try to come up with long-term and short-term strategies to protect our people and property in our communities. So I just mentioned the disaster cycle and we're trying to break that. So I wanted to explain what that is. So um, mitigation is sort of the beginning of a disaster cycle, a, a proper disaster cycle. So you try to mitigate for things that you can anticipate. So you anticipate a disaster and you try to build your sort of capacity as, an, as a community to resist the disaster. If you know something is coming, if we know there's really bad storms, we might prep for those. That's the preparation stage. Then an event occurs. So say we get some really bad flooding, then there's emergency response to that. And then it comes back to the recovery stage. The recovery stage inclu includes restoring things back to where they were or reconstructing them, hopefully in a way that mitigates against future disasters. So we're constantly in this cycle, especially up here. I think you see snow disasters often. How do we improve our infrastructure to make it so that that is better the next time? So if you're going to reconstruct, how do you reconstruct? And that's part of the local hazard mitigation plan as well. So again, why have one is that all systems have vulnerabilities, no matter what. And it is always important to try to plan and mitigate for those risks. We know we have them. We know we have storms. We know we have ice. We know we have flooding risks. So why not take the time to try to plan to mitigate for those occurrences? So again, I, I'm just trying to sort of drive the message home of what is mitigation. So again, it is a long-term or short-term action taken to reduce or eliminate risks to life or property from a hazard event. Mitigation does not automatically assume that you fixed it and that nothing will occur or that nothing bad will happen or that something won't get damaged, but you're hoping to make it a little bit less impactful to save property and life, life being the most important. So common mitigation strategies include changing policies. Our zoning is a really important example of that. Education, VT alerts is a huge deal. We learned a lot recently um, in our large scale um, water main break that not everyone in town has VT alerts, which is our number one way to communicate to folks. So this is me pitching Vermont alerts, please sign up. Um, capital infrastructure projects are also very important as well as making improvements to those existing infrastructures. So you can probably pick up on the benefits here that I'm saying, but honestly, what it really does is it focuses resources on greatest risks and vulnerabilities as identified by our community. It builds partnerships. A lot of this has been about talking to other organizations, figuring out what the greatest risks are and how other organizations can help us mitigate those risks. Hopefully this has helped educate a lot of folks who might not have been aware um, it also builds us up a really great communication tool to talk about what we're going to do to be disaster ready. It also saves us money and it opens us up to a lot of federal funding opportunities, which we would not have if we do not have a local hazard mitigation plan. Right now, because ours is overdue, um, we would be we would need a whole lot of waivers to get money if a disaster happened. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that. So an approved local hazard mitigation plan is required for local governments to receive federal funds from hazard mitigation grant programs through FEMA and the federal government. It's also needed to qualify for other post-disaster funding through the Emergency Relief and Assistance Fund. So we know that disaster recovery can be extremely costly and that um, Emergency Relief and Assistance Fund really is important in any community's recovery. And so with the adoption of a local hazard mitigation plan, we could get the highest uh, federal funding level uh, that is available through that. So there's a couple different levels to funding and what you could receive. Uh, VEM has said this is a very robust plan and um, has approved this plan. So what you're getting is a, is a plan that VEM has already vetted. So we anticipate being qualified to receive federal funding at the highest level after adoption of this plan. 
So we have an additional benefit of the local hazard mitigation plan here that we've put a lot of work into, and that is our CS CRS rating. And what that means is the National Flood Insurance Program's community rating system. So basically what it comes down to is that the mitigation strategies that we've identified in this plan basically will um, lower flood insurance premium rates for our whole community. So we anticipate um, to get one point of improvement on our plan for what it is now, uh, which will save about 5% for our community in uh, flood insurance premium rates. So we're very excited about that potential. And um, I know that this was a new uh, angle that uh, VEM and other organizations were working with. So this is a, a pretty big deal for, for this plan. So I wanted to sort of go over the process of how we got here. So funding for this update, for the 2021 update, came from a Vermont Emergency Management subgrant that came through CVRPC, the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, and that provided funding for CALIS and our um, hazard mitigation plan updates. So this is through FEMA. So FEMA helped us out with this subgrantee, et cetera. So then we are in agreement with um, CVP, CVRPC, I'll get it one day, and we gave them a cash, cash match of $2,500, which is extremely um, low for this type of work. So we're very excited about that. So here's our whole process. It was very robust. Y'all remember possibly establishing the local hazard mitigation committee that happened well over a year ago at this point. We then did initial public engagement. I'll show you the picture of that in a second, but what it was was a survey and a dot matrix asking our community to sort of give us what they think is the highest priority um, emergency in our community. We then did a hazard identification and analysis as the team and as the committee. We then set goals for the mitigation plan. We then looked at strategies and actions and we drafted an action plan um, that you see in front of you. And then we submitted that to Vermont Emergency Management. And so VEM looked at it, they gave us feedback, very little feedback. We then published that a few different places and asked for public comment. Then we got uh, the draft back from VEM and received any public comment. And then we gave it back to VEM with those changes They've approved it and now it is in front of you. So what is even in this document that you're looking at? So what we did is we looked at risks inherent in uh, the following areas. So we looked at what are the risks in our environment? What are the risks in our development patterns, like our population changes, housing, what transportation we have, what utilities and facilities we have as the city, what public safety infrastructure do we have, what municipal plans do we have that I mentioned zoning before, the National Flood Insurance Program, the CRS um, uh, uh, point system that I just talked about. And we looked at how we've interacted with emergency relief and assistance funding in the past. So then we really drilled down into our natural hazards profile and really updated what our hazard history has been. So we reviewed everything that we did in our old plans tried to see where we were at with those. We updated some our maps. We updated our description of what hazards we have, where it could impact, and really came up with strategies and plans to address those. So, yes. Were there really significant changes in the maps or uh, hazard profiles? Not really, no. Okay. I think our like I said before, I think we could all just yell out what we see as the highest risk. Yeah. I think the things that were biggest added, um, I'll get into a little bit later, but some of the bigger things were pandemic. That was never high on anybody's list of a thing that could happen. I've been on multiple local hazard mitigation planning uh, committees and that was never even addressed, right? So um, we added that. And then we also, I think, added um, more cybersecurity issues. So those are the two bigger changes I think we made. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So again, we really took a look and a drill down at those natural hazards. And then we looked at our related policies and other plans that could, like, could um, influence the local hazard mitigation plan, like our coop plans and our stormwater management plan. I think we're just calling that, oh, no, I needed it right. Masters, not in there anymore. All right. <laughs> 
So I wanted to outline this because I think this is very important because our public outreach is what makes a hazard mitigation plan. So I sort of wanted to highlight what we did. Um, we met nine times. Most of them were well over an hour. So our, our committee met many times to discuss these. Um, these meetings were held via Zoom and hybrid Zoom in person. We've also talked about this at our council meetings and our public survey was initiated and open in February of 2021. We put that on blast. We put up flyers, Facebook, Front Porch Forum, through CVRPC's website and their mailing lists. We did get 24 responses to the survey, which I actually was very happy about because they were all very well thought out um, and invested um, survey responses. So we did put that into effect in the plan. So earlier I talked about our dot matrix. This is what I'm talking about. We put out a poster in front of our voting um, booths in March of the last election. And so people were able to give feedback um, to what they think was the most important hazard for Montpelier to plan for. So we asked for public comment for the plan um, for almost a month. Um, that plan was posted on our website in person here at City Hall and um, was sent out through all of our mailing lists. Um, In-person public feedback was also gathered, like I said, on town meeting day. And then we also put posts on our Facebook and Front Porch Forum through our website, CVRPC's website, and then through weekly reports through the manager's office. So here's what you really care about, I think. So here are identified hazards. Um, I think the bigger ones you'll notice are um, snow, obviously, snow and cold. Fluvial erosion is where a lot of our strategies play into it because that really does impact flooding. So inundation, flooding, and fluvial erosion are a really big deal for us and our strategies. Um, so I'm going to, this is uh, for the public, this is a um, chart that is in the actual plan online. I'm going to not walk through every single one of the strategies because we'd be here for a long time. So I'm going to highlight one that I think is most important and is um, a prioritization under high, so a high level priority project. For instance, um, for fluvial erosion, we will be increasing community communication around VT alert and other emergency preparedness actions. So we're going to come up with a flood notification plan and some other um, policies around how to um, get the, the awareness out of an emergency. Um, another highlighted project for fluvial erosion and inundation flooding um, is focused around extending affluent piping up towards the cemetery bend in the river, which assists in melting ice jams. So basically in the winter, um, Jennifer, I don't think you've been through this yet. In the winter, sometimes we put out affluent water into the river to melt the ice so that hopefully the water will keep flowing through. And so we'd like to extend that so that the benefits of that can go further up the river. Another highlighted project includes um, actions around our stormwater projects to making sure that we're implementing what is outlined in the stormwater plan so that um, those infrastructure as strong and as uh, resilient as possible. Another highlighted project around water supply contamination mitigation actions is uh, continuing to engage with the Department of Environmental Conservation and Casella to monitor the PFAS regulatory and litigious process. Um, so also what the plan does that's in front of you is it does review our status and outlines what we did um, between 2015 and now. It also outlines our community's vulnerability for each of those hazards, and then it reviews all of those hazards and outlines new or expanded initiatives to address them if we didn't can, if we didn't finish it from the 2015 plan. So um, basically, what happens if you approve it? So if it's approved, it's adopted. We will start implementation um, for some of the things that we're already working on. We will also just continue to implement those. Throughout the process, we'll also be evaluating what is happening. And then in five years, we'll formally revise that plan. So um, this sort of just explains that a little further. And then this sort of highlights the fact that if something happens, if there's a large disaster, how do we go about 
revising this plan. So this isn't a static plan. It has no need to be a static plan because disasters are not static. So we would need to edit and update the plan if we've learned something new or if we've um, experienced something else and we would need to go through this approval process again. So I just wanna take a minute um, before we open up for conversation to thank everyone who engaged with our public outreach. Um, it really was a um, invigorating process. I wanna thank the members of the Hazard Mitigation Committee. They really were dedicated to this process throughout the entire thing. It's been a long year. And I really want to do a special shout out to Grace Vinson. She's sick and wasn't able to be here tonight with us. She was our project manager through the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, and she was super central to this plan. So I just want to thank Grace. So does anyone have any questions? That was a lot. Thank you. Uh, questions from council? Uh, Lauren and then Donna, go ahead. Um, first of all, thank you. I mean, you can just tell the incredible amount of work that went into this. Um, and really appreciate just seeing some things I know we talk about a lot of you know you didn't <coughs> in the long list like climate change wasn't there but it's in the plan over and over and over again acknowledging um and of course was glad to see the PFAS um, as an issue highlighted that we need to um come up with a plan and figure out how to address um I guess one question I had was like given that we're still in an emergency are there things that are lessons learned like i mean some stuff that i didn't see in here although it's so long i very well could have missed it but like you know like supply chains and like food supplies or stockpiling ppe or like are there things that like we wouldn't have thought about that um are just given that we've now seen how vulnerable some of our you know like I saw like foods kind of mentioned, but it's mm -hmm. more like that we should get food if there's a, you know, an event and we want to make sure that we can get food to people, but like mm -hmm. food, food lines and food insecurity. Right. So, and this, so this plan doesn't necessarily call it out with that specific amount of detail, but the idea is that uh, acknowledging that that needs to be done, right? So it sort of relies on you to create internal policies and SOPs that make that easier, right? So this is just a plan that basically says we will ensure that there's food but it's not going to tell us how to do that because you never know, like you just said, supply chains could go crazy, right? There's another thing that's very important in plans like this is to not call out someone specific that's not your organization because you do not know how a disaster will impact that organization. If we say we rely on capstone for our food production and capstone is the thing that's impacted, then, then we don't have a food production. So that's for us as staff to sort of determine what is like this, the best practice and who to talk to. So yes and no. Fair enough. Does that answer your question? I feel bad. Does that answer your question, I think? Yeah, I, I mean, in part, I was just like kind of curious how how much this changed given that we've been living through it, like in a state of emergency, or like you mentioned that pandemic wasn't even on the list. Right. Um, we talked just, a lot about that. I think Mike is standing up because he wants to give more context. <laughs> <laughs> Mike has been on our, our, our planning commission, our planning for this as well. So Mike Miller, planning uh, director. So there is, I believe in here, of a policy to do an after action report on mm -hmm. the pandemic. So it doesn't specifically talk about it here, but there is a proposal that says we should be doing an after action report. And that's where as many and as much information as we can compiled um, I mean, who knows whether it's going to be five years or 50 years before the next pandemic, but we want to compile as much as we've learned um, and put it somewhere so people have it available. So I think that's where most of your questions would get answered is in that. Mike, uh, bring it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, because this may not be an ending, it may be an ever evolving. Mm -hmm. Is there any plan to look at the most severe first year hit or second year hit or of the pandemic to do some oh. analysis now instead of waiting five years out? I so think we need to work with the state on, on sort of that data since that's not data we're collecting. You know, if you're looking at like more of a data thing, I think that would be a lot of work in connection with VEM and asking them to help with that process. So. Also, yes and no. I think that ties into the after action report that Mike well, was just talking I mean, about. One of the things is food security mm -hmm. and looking at what happened this past year and a half, almost two years now, uh, and what we could do better, like we 
secure food, had basic supplies, toilet paper of all things, you know, just basic things that people have a tendency to hoard uh, when they can or be out of it. And, and like so, one, and your index was wonderful. Um, plans index, I could find so much and I could follow that along when you were talking too. Uh, but I didn't see anything in there about like the economic impact, jobs, getting people to work. Um, and, and maybe that comes under the pandemic, but I think that's also something we really need to look at. Do you mean in like if the roads get flooded out or do you mean just specific to pandemic? No, to, to anything that might keep people from their jobs. And, and that's like you have your cyber crisis, mm -hmm. you have your floods, you, you're missing your job, missing your link if you're remote. So again, right. the things we have experienced in the pandemic, but we've also experienced when we have a big snowstorm. That is true. I will say that the focus of these plans is primarily on preserving life and property and not Physical. necessarily this like larger economic impact. I don't, that's not discounting it or saying it's not important. It's just not necessarily what this type of plan focuses on. Again, I think that that is sort of us and y'all as council to, to work with on creating policies to support our community. And I guess I bring it up as something within climate change to me, we've also got to just say economic climate change. Mm -hmm. It's both the environment and the economics of our world. So I just put it out there for thought for teaching. Not to yeah, do and I think climate. some of it also comes down to the, the, the mitigation plan. So we're looking a lot on trying to, to do the hazard mitigation. So a lot of this plan is targeted on, on, on minimizing uh, and mitigating those things ahead of time. And some of those things, we can't, we can't mitigate the, the damage to the floods, to the businesses. You know, we, we can, from, from a certain standpoint, by minimizing, say, uh, how risk, how at risk. You know, we, we require elevating buildings so that way they don't flood as often, you know, that, that type of mitigation. But a number of things we, we really can't mitigate ahead of time. We just have to respond afterwards there's that response phase you had that mitigation and preparation and then you have that response and recovery yeah. some of the response and recovery we try to do some mitigation on that but some of that is you know what we do in our in our coop plans and our other plans that are going to more address what we do in an emergency response situation thank you um no i i did see that um see winters online had a hand up took it down just wanted to check in um, got a comment online that is welcome. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> there. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, I did have a, a question about, um, you know, the city security. We're talking about you know, the hazards and concerns people have. When is the last time the city had a comprehensive uh, security risk assessment done and yeah. Did the city pay any attention to the report? Um, I, I, In regards okay. to technology, we're currently undergoing a transition plan to a new uh, technology provider. Um, so they're doing all of our computer stuff right now. So that I'd say stuff because I'm not super familiar with computers. So um, they are looking at a lot of our security measures in our, um, if, like our computer infrastructure and are helping us uh, migrate to the cloud currently. So that is a timely question because it's currently happening. Okay, thank you. More specifically, we also did this review about five years ago and we did implement the recommendations then and are now doing it again. Okay, that's, that's good because it feels like that uh, the, the risks uh, keep evolving <laughs> from an IT perspective. Yes. Do uh, capital area neighborhoods have any role in this? I'm just thinking like, you know, if there is a disaster, nothing beats a knock on the door. People do not like text messaging and stuff. Yes. And we're, we're funding them, right? So, yeah. well, yes. <laughs> All right. They're definitely part of our communication plan. Okay, great. Great. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Steve Whitaker again. Uh, I attended one of the meetings of this uh, committee, and I raised at that context the engagement. Uh, I think 24 survey responses and a bunch of city employees. While I applaud the effort that went into it, to me, this is more of a plan to plan. This is a check the boxes to get the federal funding. This is not a preparedness plan. 
And I've also reviewed the continuity of operations, the coop plans that uh, Mike just referred to. And those are really, uh, you know, some phone numbers in a few locations. They're not, there is no planning going on that's got us prepared for a hurricane or a flood. And for instance, in this document that you're, there's discussion of whether Marshfield or Wrightsville dams failed and the inundation that would be affected. And it just said there was no data available. There's no strategy to go out and get that data. I mean, there could be, there should be, but it's not there. So I, I basically suggest that if you're serious about doing planning, I went to school for planning both in California and at Woodbury College. And this, this is not a, a uh, this is not a plan that's going to save us a lot of grief. We're still going to be almost totally reliant on, you know, the Red Cross or whatever in, in a disaster. But even the vulnerabilities of our radio system, this is something that CVPSA and Capital Fire are wrestling with. Current vulnerabilities and future vulnerabilities that the CVPSA study did not look at the failure modes of those towers getting blown down that we haven't even bought yet. Uh, so. I think we're sorely lacking in the whole area of planning and preparedness of who's going to do what and how are meals and where are people going to be put up. And I was here in the 92 flood and it, it got real ugly. And basically most of the local committed workforce that would be your best asset would not have a clue what to do because we've never rehearsed these scenarios and, and crafted a plan. So I would encourage you to take this as a starting point, not an end point. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, so um, is there a motion to adopt? So moved. I'll second. All right, any further discussion? Okay, um, I'm just checking online again just make sure um so sorry is there mike did you have a comment there's, there's a motion to adopt the resolution i believe there's a form that needs to be adopted yes yes so we can get that worded correctly oh so um it, so the recommended motion in the cover sheet was uh, adopt the proposed um updated local hazard mitigation plan there is a resolution, but if they adopt the plan, it's it's part of the, it's part and parcel of the plan. Oh, okay. It's just the last page of the plan that says oh, okay. council has a yes. Yeah, so you're fine. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. Um, is that clear? Um, all right. Is there any further discussion? Okay, motion and second. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> and opposed. Okay. So uh, that passes, and so. Um, thank you, uh, Cameron and Mike, for your work on this, and please pass along our gratitude also to the other members of the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, so we are moving on to our strategic planning. Uh, it's a continued from last time. Now, to be fair, um, the way I want to uh, arrange this time is actually start with public comment, and so we'll hear from the public on, uh, there's a uh, a draft of our strategic plan goals and strategies and initiatives uh, for the council that is attached to our agenda um, and so I want to give folks an opportunity to comment first if that's okay with you and then we will uh, dive into the remainder of this and I'm <coughs> now because we probably will not have an opportunity for public comment later <coughs> um, so recess for our break right now right now that I would be totally fine <laughs> thank you yeah you're yeah yeah totally. <coughs> um so we're gonna that that sounds great especially since this is a be kind of a substantial topic um so it is 741 right now and I think we can oh 742 uh let's go to, you know it's 10 minutes 752 sound all right okay so we'll we'll take a break and be back at 752 I'm sure. Uh, so we are going to start with public comment. Um, so our uh, the draft is available online, and um, so this is the opportunity for, for public 
public to, to comment on it, and then we're going to uh, go into continuing our conversation from last time. So uh, I know we have at least uh, one person that's to comment, so go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Casey Whiteley. Uh, I live on St. Paul Street. I'm a longtime Vermont Montpelier resident and homeowner. And I just want to bring something up um, that I have contacted all of all of the counselors about, which is first I want to appreciate the seriousness and the complexity of all these issues that you all are dealing with and how interrelated a lot of them seem. And the one I want to talk about that I respectfully going to ask you to make a priority on the strategic plan is, a, is about the leachate that um, is coming to our, our treatment plant and being discharged into, um, into the Dog River, then to the which, Willinooski. And when we talk about hazard mitigation, I feel like this is a hazard mitigation, but it's also a really important part of our environmental stewardship or whatever, we, however we want to label it on the strategic plan. I think it's well established that the toxic chemicals that the leachate contain, and you've already mentioned PFAS tonight several times, are a very serious danger to human life, aquatic life, um, as well as the health of our precious waterways. And this is not a problem or an issue that rests on Montpelier's shoulders alone. I think um, in the short term, it is a management issue for us, but in the long term, I believe it really is the state's responsibility to ensure that leachate doesn't uh, continue to contaminate our watersheds and the public's health. You're probably aware that the Agency of Natural Resources has granted a moratorium or a suspension of, of leachate going to the Newport wastewater treatment plant up in Lake Memphremagog, which is where the Casella landfill is and where three rivers come into the South Bay and Memphremagog. It's an international issue because leachate uh, PFAS have been found in the water that is actually a drinking water supply for 170,000 of our Quebec neighbors. Um, so I think the, and so, oh, so anyway, what I, the, the main point, one of the main points I wanted to make with you all was that the Agency of Natural Resources has declared a moratorium for Newport to not take any leachate until January 1st, 2025. So that sort of begs the question for me that if leachate is not safe for people in waterways in the men from Agog watershed, how could that same leachate be safe for us here in our watershed? So I'm, I'm going to make this short. I know you've got a lot to do. I'm just respectfully asking and encouraging you all to make this a priority in the strategic plan to develop a plan to manage and ultimately stop discharging PFAS and PFOAs into the Winooski watershed. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? Yep, go ahead. Uh, I've only got this a minute ago, so I'm not as prepared as I would like to be. Um, I have not had opportunity to uh, download uh, I know it's been speaking to your city clerk about your website. I'm not the only one who's well aware of the deficiencies of the website. Um, I'm concerned where the examples came from, especially when it gets to the public safety, regional improvements and hazard emergency hazard. Um, and I want to also second the comments you just heard that this we're accepting this toxic stuff for, for profit. We're, we're profiting off of taking toxic garbage from other landfills and we might not should be doing that. And I don't know to what degree our, you know, financial break even of our, you know, treatment plant uh, improvements is dependent on it, but we shouldn't be held over a barrel on that, on that regard. Uh, I know people who have had serious uh, organ damage and surgery and whatnot from PFAS contamination. A expert engineers on the topic, if you want to hear from them, from him. Um, so I'm concerned that the urgency of the unhoused looks to me like something you'll think about and talk about till next year or the year after here. This, there is not action uh, there's no sense of urgency in this policy around study implementation needs for 
more, more robust social, social services style offering or uh, determine the level of social services. You got people sleeping under bridges, we, getting COVID. We've just had a COVID case in the community here, uh, a woman you uh, frequently see in front of Cool Jewels has been taken off to quarantine with a positive COVID test and had been sharing pipes and cigarettes with other folks uh, over at Confluence Park. So this is real serious stuff. We're allowing this, you know, uh, anyway, I think you get the point. To the degree, yes, this is supposed to be a strategic plan, but to the degree some stuff jumps right to the top and it starts becoming action, I don't think, I don't think this uh, can be more uh, strongly emphasized. Okay, thank you. And anyone online? I don't see any hands, but just want to provide that time in case someone does change your mind. Okay, all right. Um, so with that, uh, and to move on into this process, I think I'm turning it back over to Cameron. Yes. So I or it must be. Let's go, yeah. go yeah. for it quickly, just Never to mind. give you the 50,000 <laughs> mile view here. Um, just put on your <laughs> drafts of the vision, mission, and value statement. Um, you don't really need to address those tonight if you don't want, but um, took a lot of the stuff in front of the board, try to get it as concise as possible and in the right category. And there were some things that were said that then show up in the goals and strategies. So, you know, try to put everything where it belongs. Uh, to the point of uh, the comment that we just made and, and others, uh, the potential initiatives that are in the lab, th those came from the list of things that you all put up on the board a couple weeks ago, and then a list of things that the staff put in. Um, those are not a final list, so we certainly can't add or subtract or divide. And I think um, so. From there, I'm going to turn it over to Cameron about our, you know, that's what our process tonight and probably the next meeting is, is to to really get at where we want to be. So, so my goals for tonight, and feel free to disagree, but I would love to get um, sort of the formal vote on the strategies. And then we could start discussing the initiatives. Um, like, like Bill said, they are sort of a collaborative effort. And so once you've prioritized the strategies, we could talk about the related uh, initiatives. So my goal in creating this for y'all is if something does not reach the level of priority on your strategies, as the initiatives that are council supported or council put forward in the strategies that are not voted for. So um, we're just going to pick one on the front page, right? So if y'all do not vote, just prioritize the strategy of promoting outdoor economy. Sorry, Alec. Um, if you don't vote for that, those two things were not council um, driven. Those were both like staff recommendations that built off of yours. So those would still stay within the staff work plans. But say both of those things were crazy off the wall, <laughs> no offense, crazy off the wall is something that one of you championed, then it wouldn't have gotten priority status and we would just continue to use staff initiatives in that strategy. Does that make sense? Am I explaining that correctly for y'all? So I yes, Jay. Sorry, sorry, I just had a couple questions. One yeah. is, Bill, I just wanted to clarify, like, so our action items, because I definitely have feedback on the vision mission that this is nothing we're necessarily going to deal with tonight. No, it was okay. just to and, and those are really the just the, the overarching documents that could you know, basically say here, here's our big vision for the future of the city. Here's kind of the mission of the organization. And here's the values to which we would, yep. everything we do, we would put through those values. But then this is the actual plan of these are our top goals for this year. These are the actions. We're doing. So is this something that we're going to invest some time in to refine? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. My goal would be to, to, now that you have time to a uh, next meeting. Yeah. Okay. The next meeting yeah. when we give you a draft to sort of work towards you, that. Totally we fine. Did a little bit of that work at the last meeting, but it was just, you know, these long, long lists of oh, things. Yeah. Oh, and I tried oh, there to, was lots so of pieces of I tried to sort paper. them into more concise statements and then look at some of the things that were in the list were also in the goals. They were more specific. So, okay, so that, that's that's fine. I just wanted to understand how we can the, the draft, draft provide draft feedback on that. 
Yeah. Oh, I see that. Don't worry. I, I, and I, I know it wasn't like, okay, let's make it perfect right now, but I just want to understand that process. The other thing I wanted to, the second thing I wanted to mention was um, uh, just looking through this real quick. I know Jennifer has been having some issues with her email and I don't see her name on any of these. So I, I would like to, and I don't know exactly how in this process um, we, we fairly make it work that she can sort of speak up and add her name to some of these things. And Cameron, maybe you've already thought of this, but I would like to make sure that she has the opportunity to do that. So. Yes. So this, y'all just straw polled. That wasn't formal. Totally. Jennifer, I hope that you've seen these. I sent them a few times. So I'm hoping they came through and you just weren't able to like X on your computer. Okay. So <laughs> on my phone, on your phone, that's what I meant. Yeah. Sorry um, about that. But okay. so this was just a straw poll. Yeah. And so what I would like to do now is because you've sort of laid out what you are interested in prioritizing is sort of walk through each of the goals and then vote for the, the strategies that you would like to see. So we can either go through them roll call wise or just call out the ones that um, got a straw poll priority and mayor, I sort of turn that over to what you want to do. Sure. Actually, before we do that, I just want to um, come back to Jay's question a bit. Do you want to create time for us to provide feedback on this document tonight, or would you? Okay. I'd prefer that for next meeting. For next, next meeting. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, great. Okay. That, so, that makes sense to me. I think what I, I'll, I'll uh, sorry, this feels a little scattered, but That's I think no, there's a lot of ideas floating it's around. Fine. So what I'd like to come out of tonight with is enough information to build out our um, departmental work plans to build into your strategic plan to give you a draft for your next meeting so that you are responding to an actual draft and not just a spreadsheet. So um, right after this meeting, it starts a lot of uh, meetings with my department heads to sort of go over what you guys talk about tonight and sort of build this out as a real plan and not just the, the highlighted um, sort of headlines, if you will, for each. Donna, Donna. sorry. The goals are listed here, and I would prefer we put them in some sort of priority order. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I would like to I'd like to know why that one's one. I keep seeing it all the time, but. Oh, just because so I know, they but, were. So we haven't consciously done that, and I know no. the list may not mean that, but I guess I would prefer that we actually try to do that. If not okay. tonight, maybe some other time. If the council also would like to see this, the goals themselves listed in an order that makes sense of, this is our foundation, this is what we build on and we build on and we build on. Um, okay, so you're also asking to prioritize the six goals? Yes. Okay. Consider that. Yeah. Um, my only hesitation about doing that, I think that could be good. My only hesitation is that, um, if some things end up uh, like under the strategies, does that make some strategies more important than other strategies? Um, I would, but, yeah, I would also sort of argue that all your goals are the top priority. They are the things that you've identified as your goals are the top priority for the council, right? Those six things. So they're sort of on an equal playing field. And I can definitely just. Okay. I disagree with that. Time. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Well, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to do that if, if others want to. I don't want, I mean, at least maybe even at some future date, to me, that doesn't change the strategies. The strategies are what we've yeah. chosen. Right. I would just like us to think better about our goals as building blocks. That's all. Yeah. Okay. No, that's. That's fair. Um, maybe. And actually, if you think about it, we were we were on the path at the first meeting to try to get to three priority goals and then others, and we got from nine to six, and then we, we sort of stopped. But we we were going to keep the six, which is which were the top three. We would just divide them into top three. They're also important goals. Yeah, or like which one of these are the more foundational ones right. and, and others? <laughs> um, I I think if I'm going to make this proposal that if folks have thoughts on ordering the goals, that uh, perhaps that is something that we can provide feedback to Cameron um, between now and the next meeting. Is that all right? And then if there is some kind of consensus around that, then um, Cameron, you'll know um, and can report out on, on that. And if we need a discussion, then we yeah. Is that, is that all right? That's great. That's great. Okay, great.
Um, but moving back to the strategies. Oh, Connor, go ahead. Yeah, no, sorry. There was one strategy that kind of stuck out to me. Jack was the only one who voted for it, the clarify the city's roles in social services and policy. I sort of thought that was a discussion that just needed to be had because it informs so much of the other discussion, like childcare, homelessness, you know. Um, this is why I didn't vote for it, you know? Yeah, well, and actually, I, I'm kind of wondering um, about the comment that you made, Cameron, about um, you know some of these things, they're gonna happen anyway. They're a part of, they're gonna be a part of the work plan. Um, are those things, at the strategy level or are those things at the initiative level? Initiative. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, yes, Lauren. I mean, just on that point, and I know, like, I had put this in my email, but just for people who aren't copied on that email, you know, I was, to me, I was trying to vote for things that I felt like might not otherwise get done if they weren't identified as council priorities you know something like you know the core infrastructure i think we had all flagged like there's you know so much work to do to to maintain and like of course we need to be focused on on infrastructure but i didn't vote for it because i i know that that will be a priority of city staff and that we made that clear um so you know only having 10 votes uh, i wanted to make sure that some other things that might otherwise not get done I don't know that it's always totally clear and I don't know if there's like a way to indicate easily in the spreadsheet which things you view as the like we will not do if council doesn't prioritize it and which <laughs> things are just part of the work plan right because that is not always totally clear to me in some of these like I might I might view them of of course we should be <laughs> doing this but if if nobody on staff is viewing it as part of their job Donna looks Can very I ask confused. you a question? Because I don't understand that thinking. Of, because then we would remove a whole lot of things here that the staff's going to do anyway. Of, you know, but it's a matter of, of what priority is DPW streets or what priority is it to the police to do this. So I didn't assume anything was going to get done when I did my voting. And, and that's fine if we need to. That's what I want to know. I, I grab my votes back and I'll put them someplace else. Yeah, right. Like that matters. <laughs> So I need to know what the rationale is with everybody. If we can come to that agreement, it'd be helpful. So I guess for the strategies, we gave example initiatives. Y'all threw out a bunch of initiatives. The, count, the staff threw out a bunch of initiatives, right? So the strategies are the things that we can all sort of agree on at this point. We haven't prioritized them, but we've agreed on them, right? You see these as priority strategies, we agree. Here are some example potential, potential initiatives to help support that strategy. So what I'd like to get to tonight is to vote on the proposed strategies. For instance, that first one, actively support economic development. If that's a priority for you, then we can build out uh, those initiatives with staff. If that's something that we feel like is not something that's appropriate, I'm not going to include that in the things for you to look at, and we'll highlight why. Um, so for instance, like the mayor has an idea of initiatives for zero to three child care, right? I think that's a really good Point because that we've talked about it a little bit. So I'm going to use that as an example. That's under um, improve community prosperity in um, explore expanded child care. If nobody votes for that, that's not necessarily going to go away because staff is still interested in providing that service, right? But it would not be included on your strategic plan because that was not something that we saw as feasible before. And so it's not something that you guys have voted as a priority strategy, and therefore, why would we, why would we elevate it up to a place where we're talking about it publicly and putting money towards it if it's not supported by all of council, right? So what we're getting to today is the um, strategies, and then we can come back to y'all and tell you, here are the initiatives that y'all came up with for that strategy, so actively support economic development. Here are all the initiatives that we've identified that can fit under that strategy that you and staff have come up with. If for any reason there's something that we, staff feels like we can't do or whatever, we're gonna bring that to you and say, here's what's not included in that, right? Does that make can more it, sense? Yeah, so, I, can I pause here? Yes. Sorry, um, I, I just wanna verify that folks are on board with the, so to the, the column to the left of the council, the. The, the yellow column, the council poll for priority 
uh, strategies. To the left of that is proposed strategies. Mm -hmm. um, so what I hear you saying, Cameron, is that tonight I'd like to vote on those. You want to vote on, on those strategies? Yes. Um, so that's what y'all straw poll for. And, uh, but is is the idea that because they're here, if just because we don't vote for them doesn't mean they go away. Right, correct. Um, so if no one votes for promote outdoor economy, that is still Alex Bold yeah, for right. his department. And so y'all got keep getting, when I give you guys strategic plan updates, you get two reports. You're getting the report of all the things that y'all have identified as priorities yeah. and then all of the work plan items, right? So, oh, sorry. Yep, go for it. So uh, I also just want to verify with the council, <coughs> is there anything on here that you think sh really so, shouldn't, uh, under proposed strategies, that really shouldn't be on there? Is that, a, is that a fair question? That is, because I'm hearing um, Connor say that he didn't vote for a clarified city's role in social services because he wants that to be an agenda item just to talk about. But he's so, not. But you're not opposed to it. Like you don't want to take it off. Of this no, thing. I think it's like necessary okay. because it informs the rest of the items. Okay, you know? okay. So I just want to do a quick check with the council. Is there anything on the, the proposed strategies that you're like, I, I actually don't think that's a good idea or we should take that off? Oh, Lauren, good. I mean, I to me, I think there's obviously it, it was like a tricky thing to try to figure out how to lump <laughs> a whole bunch of ideas. Um, you know, so for example, some of these like, you know, so there's no votes for provide community support to residents in need the way it was ca characterized there. Like to me, I would have put the workforce development for unhoused people could maybe go under the homelessness um line that people that i think will be a priority that's identified like so there's some initiatives that i might have like recharacterized in different ways and like the peer support outreach worker that is something that i think again could go in a different category so i mean it might be a case of some of these are things that are just going to be staff priorities some of these i would have like i i think a line is really important or i view it as like that's also something that the police review committee recommended, for example, the expanding the peer outreach worker. So to me, that was covered under the provide policing, which fits Montpelier's needs and implementing that report. because That's a recommendation there. So it gets kind of squishy. <laughs> like, okay. yeah, and, and I totally understand this was like an exercise yeah. and right. like a challenging yeah. thing. So I guess just like, how would we think about some of those things that I think, like I would have identified some of those initiatives as priorities, even if I didn't vote for it and nobody did. Yeah, I think that was what the Board of Intents was to try to go through the whole list of initiatives, see if there's any more we can add and then vote on those top activities because then we can figure out if there's some that are going to drop off. Is that what we continue? We could do that. I think it would be very hard to go through all 170 <laughs> of them. Uh, well, we could just take the time to just pick their top whatever and yeah. see what okay. It's not exactly what I prepared for tonight <laughs> okay. because I would have, I think I, I I just am not prepared for that, and I don't know if council is prepared. But we can talk about it. This yeah. is all a flexible process. Yeah. So, um, I'm sorry, so, I, I didn't yeah. hear all of Bill. Are you talking about going through the initiatives instead uh, of the strategies? To see, to see what the top choices were of those doesn't again doesn't mean that something's out, but it might be interesting to see which particular projects had the most interest without doing the strategies themselves. I, I, I think we need to establish that. I mean, that's my strategies. number one goal is if yeah. we if we walk out of here, at least understanding the strategies, then after that, we can talk about those the initiatives that go with the prioritized strategies, because I, I, if we don't have a consensus of what the important strategies are, then the conversations about the initiatives that support those are unhelpful. But yeah. Lauren, I do hear you saying that some of them can move and I agree and I would love to hear those ideas first too you know if, if you're like this thing is important to me and i would have voted for it if it and i think it goes to this other place okay. I, this is a work in progress so I'm here to hear mm -hmm. that fair enough and i also just want to verify i didn't hear anybody objecting to and to any of the strategies like none should be taken off the list in or at least uh, the, the strategy level yes jack Thank yeah, you. I, okay, I just wanted to clarify that. I, yeah, I, I agree with that. For instance, I'm looking at the strategy of communicate effectively, which I did not vote for. Of course, the city needs to communicate effectively. 
I, I don't think it necessarily requires council level discussion to say we need to make the website better. I think that that is uh, an element of uh, management rather than policy. And that's, I, that's I, how I thought about a lot, a lot well, of these I, things. I agree, but it's important to us to know that a majority of you thought that was one of your highest priorities. Yes. So I think that it's not so much what coming off, it's where do they fall? So, you know, yes, we should communicate effectively, but if, if people think we really need to, you know, if that's something we want to spend a lot more, you know, priority time on this year, really it's an effort, then, then it's good to know that that's where that falls. And, you know, other people have other priorities. It's not saying that, you know, if we all, well, I didn't vote, but everyone could vote for everything if, if we didn't have a living. It's like, where do you, <laughs> Part it's of the really exercise to, is to see what people prioritize to yeah. see, and the same thing I think eventually with the strategy, the initiatives is just you know a lot of projects in here. We talked about a lot. You know, we're not going to be able to do them all. We're going to have to decide at budget time or whatever. So there's some that people really aren't supportive of that aren't you know then then let's let's stop talking. You know let's we stop you know mm -hmm. get them off the list. Okay, so. So at this point, are we looking at which, do you want to have the conversation about strategies first? Like yes. what are our yes. top? Yes, I would like to go by goal by goal and vote on which sort of, you've already sort of pulled what you thought was your top. Um, and I would like to sort of get your formal vote on each of the strategies. So um, again, if y'all are okay with capping it at 10, the reason I gave you 10 votes is, is because of um, that's how you facilitate, make sure that we're not getting like a thousand ties on things. Um, you know, you can expand that. I think the, doing the math, I think you can expand it to probably 11 or 12 without messing anything up for ties, but <laughs> that's up to you. Um, that's sort of a facilitator um, number there. So I'm certainly not going to tell you to not vote for something more than once. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we can go through the improved community prosperity goal. We have one, two, three, four, five, six proposed strategies. Uh, they're actively supporting economic development, promoting outdoor economy, maintaining a vibrant downtown. Um, this one is up for question, but clarifying the city's role in social services. Provide community support to residents in need, including um, some different workforce and um, uh, intern programs and exploring expanded child care. So I'll just sort of go through them one by one and maybe we could just raise our hands. Mayor, does that sound sure. appropriate? Okay. So actively supporting economic development. Are we, are we voting to say like, this is something we want of one of our 10? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> is this one of our 10? Okay. Did, well, um, oh wait, do we want to like, anybody want to make a case for one or, if we go goal by goal, uh, like assuming we want to talk about these a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's really fair. Don, well, given ahead. that the council wouldn't vote $75,000 to the development core, I can't imagine we want to put a staff in on this, add a staff, and without a staff, I don't see how we can do that. And so that's why it's not one of my top 10. I don't see it reasonable within the financial parameters. Okay. Uh, so that's interesting because that, that's one of the things that I'm like, oh, we got to figure out our economic development thing. Like, I would love to have that conversation. Like, are we still, are, where, where are we at with economic development and do we need to hire somebody or do we need to um, pay somebody else to do economic development? But anyway, that's, that's just where I'm at. Any other thoughts on, on this particular one. Hi. I don't know if y'all can hear me. We can. That scared me. Hi. Yeah. I would actually like to see if the community itself could be a committee for it so that we would work together from within the community, both citizens and business owners. And it could be a really great way to meet some of our needs if we can have economic development to solve some of the issues that we've been talking about tonight that the solutions come from us and in doing so create business in the area as well. So um, thank you. That's an interesting um, comment, but I think that's something that we could take up at a future time. 
And actually for now, we're actually not, um, like I appreciate, uh, appreciate your, your thought there and I think it's worth further discussion, uh, but we're actually not gonna be taking uh, public comment during this section of um, it, it was just in response to the idea of hiring someone. That's yes, all. right, exactly. We'll have there will be future opportunity for the public to comment on that section. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna continue with our uh, meeting for now. But thank you. Um, so any other thoughts on economic? If, uh, yeah, go ahead, Connor. Well, is it fair to say the assumption would be that we have an agenda item to talk about how we structure economic development at a future date? And these would fall underneath <laughs> that. I, I, I assume there wasn't written in stone. There'd be a staff, or there'd be another right, model. Right, right. So, yeah. so I would say how we would interpret this is that if, just say it went the way you, you've already done this drop off, but if this was a top strategy, something that was important to the council, that in another month or two when we're doing the budget, we would propose funding in the budget. And again, depending on the overall picture. But we probably would include it because it would have, and with a recommendation for what to do with that funding, whether we hire someone contract or or just put in money and figure it out later. But at least saying you've said it's important, um, you know, to, to the comment, you know, perhaps even if we had a person, we might have an economic development steering committee made up of community members or something like that, you know. So, uh, but we could talk about the hows, the details as you know, as we go forward, it would be. You've said this is important, so it's important to us to respond and give you a plan for moving forward. Um, if it wasn't important, then you know, it would be, we might still do, we probably would still look at the tax stabilization of TIF program, but we might not talk about funding and those kinds of things. Um, Jay, and then I have a thought. Go ahead. Do you want to? Well, I was just thinking about process stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have 10 votes. <laughs> as a straw poll, not an official vote, but, um, and so, you know, knowing that like, okay, maybe explore expanded childcare is, that's on the list and, you know, it, all of these are, so, you know, somewhere in the, in the work plan, would I redistribute my votes? Does that make sense? Like maybe some of us would like to, to reconsider yeah, where our votes Again, none of go. these things are, are going to go away. And, and just want to check in with you, Jennifer. I don't know if you've already thought about like, these are where my 10 votes would go. You already know. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's why um, after I rose my hand, I was like, wait, no, I did not put my name down for that. Oh, okay. Sorry. So I also wanted to check on that because I saw you, you yes. saw you do that. Um, Donna, go well, ahead. Are you, are you saying what I think? I, I don't feel that the expanded, um, explore expanded child care should be a strategy. I think it should be an initiative. Everything else is very abstract and that's very specific. It is, I, I agree, I agree, that's that's fine with me. I, I also kind of wonder, um, you know, also knowing that like the second one here, promote outdoor economy, that's gonna happen anyway, right? Like we're... Right, but it's y'all prioritizing where you want staff time and money to go. Okay. So if you say that's a big deal to us, we wanna make that happen, then it's up to, to me to work with Alec to Goes determine to what, right. what's going to make that happen for you. Right. Right. This is you directing us on what you want time and money to go to. Okay. That's really what it comes down to. Honestly. I'm just trying to think of like, should I re redistribute my votes? <laughs> I, I mean, know. again, nothing's going to go away. This is a planning yeah. document that we can address. And you can reprioritize and you can say, I don't like this plan anymore at any time, at any time. Um, so, okay. Um, do we want to? Yes, Jack. Go ahead. I thought your dis your mention of the uh, explore the promote the outdoor economy is a good example because I think many of us, if not all of us, were really quite energized by Alex's presentation. Um, I don't think it's to the point where we can say, well, we've got something that's fleshed out that we can do or decide to do. And so that might be a reason why it not, might not be one of our high priorities for this year, but Alex is gonna keep working on it. He's gonna keep uh, agitating for us to do this. And when he comes back to us, we could come back and say, yeah, this is now something you've got fleshed out. We're gonna do this. Yep, that makes perfect sense. 
gives us sweet. Okay. Uh, all right. Sorry. It's, I don't know. It's, do, do you want to? Do you want to take that straw poll again for the first one? I, of course. Yep. Good. Can do. Since well, uh, or no? What did you have thought? Well, I was just trying to think process wise. Yeah. Like, do you want? Do you want to take five and make hash marks, or I can give you note cards and we'll write down there ten and no. We. I think we can just this raise hands. I can write people's good. names down. We're good to go. Yeah. yeah. Good to go, Bill. Thank you for thinking. <laughs> Um, well, and I, the only reason I was thinking about redoing this because Jennifer was like, you know, maybe not that one. So I had for the first one actively support economic development. I had Ann, Connor, Jay, and Jack, and Warren raise their hands. Did you not? I, I misunderstood. Okay. <laughs> we didn't understand the assignment. Okay. All right. So never mind. I had Ann, Connor, Jay, and Jack. Yes. All right. Promote outdoor economy. So. I'm sorry. <laughs> Couldn't that be part of actively support economic development? That, that's a type be. of economic development from my perspective. I think that that is empowering staff to say, hey, the, we, the council is willing to invest in whatever it looks like, right? Um, staff, et cetera, post um, MDC, right? Um, that will leave you will leave it to you to decide or consult with us but to decide what's the best approach and what we think is the best for montpelier now i would say that promoting the outdoor economy should be a very significant part of supporting economic development in the city so i'd hate to say oh well the council supported this but not this because okay. ultimately it's empowering staff to figure out what's the best so way forward so could we combine those yes and and i think actually that's kind of a, a, pot, a good outcome of these, these conversations yeah um because it's basically saying okay it's maybe it may be you know one of the top strategies we can do but it's definitely not on our list the other thing I, I do want to assure people that you know we're we're a small organization and we're at these meetings and we're watching these meetings you know it's not like these conversations don't happen so vote on something it's you know it's like well they didn't vote for it so we're just you know we hear you say this is important we're moving into these things it, it, they don't care about it. so they just but it is really helpful to say these are the five or ten things that are really the you know when we're sitting here next year we want to have had really moved the ball forward or completed you know or done things of these areas this is like where we're going to hold ourselves really accountable yeah go ahead Dan. can i ask jay a question were you saying that this and this should become an initiative it's like child care it's really very specific it should move under the column of initiatives under active supportive economic development yeah. that's, that's what i think it should be umbrella yeah i think that that yeah for looking yeah. at the columns i think yeah. that that makes sense that that you know it's it's a little bit broader than yeah. some of the other things that are under the example um initiatives but um i think it it, it falls under that umbrella so yeah and we can take so. a stab at draft. yeah we Yes. So the, yes. So we'll come back. Thank you. I saw a bunch of nods, so I'm just going to move that. That's great. Um, Dude, so it thumbs like actively <laughs> support economic development with the caveat of combining the promote act, outdoor eco wow word. Sorry, guys. Outdoor economy as um, initiatives under that strategy. Yes. So does that change anybody's vote? No. All right. Maintain a and again. Uh, when I say these things out loud, it's not saying that we don't want to do these things. <laughs> right. Maintain a vibrant downtown. Okay. Uh, this has been sort of put out there by Connor as something to take off of this, but clarify city's role in social services policy and involvement. Thank you. Provide community support to residents in need. Thank you. Um, May I, as, uh, as a part of that, um, we're talking about maybe explore expanded child care as being an mm -hmm. item underneath mm -hmm. that one. And then, I don't know, Lauren, were you also referencing? Um, moving one thing to Yeah, the, the you were also board. suggesting moving something. What were you? The workforce development to the homeless. Section. Oh, I thought that was under this one. I guess I'm. It is. It is She's right suggesting now. moving to the I, I mean, it looked like it wasn't going to be highlighted. And so I was thinking it does look like, you know, addressing 
issues related to homelessness, like we could maybe put that under that because it looks like it's going to be a priority and it might be one of the strategies we want to be exploring. Um, and then similarly, the peer support outreach worker to me also is part of that program. Um, yeah. I've moved those. That doesn't help your expansion of healthcare. <laughs> no, that's fine. I, I mean, I'm seeing that as under provide mm -hmm. community support to residents in need. Yes. And so so you're you're saying maybe address homelessness in the community as also being a part of that? No, no she's no. saying to move I'm those sorry. two initiatives into the last page under address homelessness in the community. Oh, I see. Adding those initiatives there. Okay, got you. So right so <laughs> okay fair enough <laughs> i'm going to also vote for to provide community support to residents in need so i have jennifer and ann formal votes on that one and the child care is in that now yes yes all right so that is that goal your number one goal for that is actively support economic development with outdoor economy moved underneath it. Um, that's the only one that received a majority vote. Next goal, provide responsible and engaged government. So the first strategy that we're discussing is communicate effectively, which we've sort of talked about um, accessible communication, some of our resource officers, um, increasing coordination with CAN, and doing some more forum and outreach. Hands for communicate effectively. I want to add the website there. Oh, it's in yeah. there. It is. It's, it's the first yeah. one. Sorry. Improve the city's website, previous page. community oh, events. Page. And recruitment fairs. So then the next is provide excellent services, which had some um, accreditation uh, initiatives supporting, wow, word supporting it. Um, talking about our community services department, retaining staff, uh, and some other things. So provide excellent services. This is just our job. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's how I felt about it, too. Okay. Follow equitable and inclusive practices, which talks about the equity action plan recommendations and language access improvements. So equitable and inclusive practices. Okay. Make a yeah, You put that under excellent service and you have four votes. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, equitable, and inclusive That's what excellent service. services are all about. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, one, one thought, just seeing where the dice is being rolled, um, I mean, to me, seeking language access improvements is part of effectively communicating with our community. Um, I mean, to me, a lot of the equity report recommendations were tied to better communicating and engaging. Um, and I mean, some of, I don't know if communicate is covering this, but it was like, how are we um, might have been elsewhere like providing space for people to gather and things like that there's that might be lumping too much into communicating but um how are communicating and engaging would people, people feel comfortable moving those initiatives up into communicate effectively would that change so anybody's vote on that one that would sense. i think it makes sense to move yeah. the second one particularly second one yeah. language access language yeah. access okay <clears throat> that's also not to say that i I mean, I think we should be implementing the recommendations. The question is, how much council time is that? Right. The mostly their second, rec their most recommendation outside of language access is to continue to do the equity assessment yeah. because it's not done. So, and that's on that's on my work plan. So it's not again going away. So then, achieve full accessibility to city spaces. So this talks about ADA compliance and our ADA transition plan which we're currently working on getting quotes for. Jennifer, thank you. Uh, the next one is, we titled it Create Global Connection, uh, which was the Establish a Sister City Program. Okay. 
And then the last one in this is the fiscal resiliency, which uh, talks about some of the um, budget process priorities that finance has. Okay. All right. So the one with council. Um, <clears throat> Oh, I'm so sorry, my brain has melted out of my ears. <laughs> Majority is the communicate effectively, which we have moved language access into. Thank you. Be before we move off this topic, um, one this comes under the overall heading of provide responsible and engaged government. And I'm not sure that that language really captures what we were going for, because I think that what we were going for was a couple of things. One, <coughs> having the government be both responsible and responsive, but two, creating uh, conditions for the citizenry to be engaged. And, and I think that's, there may be a better way to phrase it, but I think engaged government isn't really, doesn't really capture it the way that we were talking about it last time. Does anyone have any, do you have a language uh, recommendation or um, a phrasing recommendation? Not they off the top of my head, that. but that's just, mm, okay. yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, next goal is the create more housing goal. So the first strategy there would be increase available housing units. We talked about a few things in the proposed initiatives, like prioritizing infills through the ADUs, working with um, partners for VHCB grants, um, and our housing task force plans. Can I get hands for increasing available housing units? Uh, are you skip? Did you skip one? Did I skip one? Yeah, yes, on I the did. Pre previous page, yeah. yeah. Sorry, folks. Um, apparently, I also cannot read. So <laughs> the first one, in actuality, is consider housing task force recommendations, um, which includes uh, updating some studies, zoning changes, maintaining funding for the housing trust fund, and some other recommendations. Can I get a hand for housing task force recommendations? All right. Thank you. But again, I guess I feel that's under increased housing unit. That's Same. one of the means, so I would put it with the other right below it. And I'd add that consider the recommendations is pretty passive. Okay, fair enough. So <laughs> I agree. The word implement can be used. But I agree with Donna that it feels like that could easily combine into, okay. into one. And so the other, the increased available housing units also in straw poll got a majority. And so we can work as staff to combine those and try to figure out what the best phrasing is, if that sounds amenable to folks. That's fine with me. Anybody objecting to combining those? Okay. Yeah, Jack, go ahead. Um, when we get into the next bullet, the short discuss short-term rental, policy i think that that's also part of increasing available housing units because what we are seeing in short-term rentals is that it's actually reducing the availability of rental housing and if we if we hope to increase the availability of housing then at a minimum we need to stop further losses of housing I separated that out on purpose, and I'm hoping that Mike is still here. Mike, can I call on you to sort of discuss this briefly? As hey, to why it's before you do, well, while he's walking up, I also wanted, because because I, I looked at this too. Um, your overall goal was to create more housing. So if your strategy is increase available housing, you're kind of saying the same thing. I think the idea is how do we take your goal of creating more housing, what are some of the strategies to achieve that goal? So some of these really are you know, splitting them apart into the chunks that we're gonna work on to, to accomplish that goal. If we just say our goal is to create more housing and our strategy is to increase housing units, we haven't really 
narrowed it down at all. Mm -hmm. So we might want to maybe maybe we need to look at this whole section a little bit and come back with a redraft. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. I don't know if there's a question, though. No, no, oh. no. I, there's no <laughs> question answer. Uh, I just was... He doesn't like us combining them all. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> He's got a point. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, I mean, it, it's... So the short-term rental policy was... Yeah, the short-term rental wasn't actually increasing the amount of housing, which is, I think, why we had talked about splitting it out. If, we have, if, we're, if our goal is to increase housing, these are the tools to do that. And if our goal is to do something else, then that's a different tool. Be different. Hmm. So I'm um, back at the question of like, are we combining that first one, consider housing task force recommendations with increased available housing units or leaving them separate? I mean, they're fr from, a, from a person who works with homeless community and homeless families, they're all interconnected, yeah. right? So can't afford, your housing, you end up homeless, and then the snowball continues. So, yeah. Uh, other thoughts on? on that? I think the first two are too intertwined. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah, you need to implement the zoning there if you're going to work with developers to get something off the ground. It's you know, one that's the a other. good point. Right, actively. How about we make life easy for you? And um, <laughs> well, it's clear that you know it's a priority. that ho housing is a huge priority. Maybe we could just take a look at this section and okay. redraft it around and yeah. try to group things a little bit differently so that it, it, it they go together sure. in a different way. We'll just okay. consider all of that a <laughs> right. priority strategy. Yep. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll revisit that this one. Would be yes. top, this would be done as number one, right? <laughs> yes. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that was a chunk done. All right. Um, the next goal is practicing good environmental stewardship. Uh, this split's funny. I apologize about that. Um, the first strategy there was promote conservation of river, water, and land mm, resources. Support Gosh, y'all, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Oh, oh boy. So it's actually support parks expansion, um, which um, discuss uh, the green print and some um, other uh, support for the parks. So can I get hands raised for that? Thank you. The Next one is promote conservation of river, water, and land resources. This one discussed feasibility studies for dam removal, conservation around Berlin Pond, um, our urban forests. It discusses PFAS and some other uh, rivers and wetlands conservant. Conservant. Oh man, I'm done. Do All right, water? no words. I do, but I'm okay. <laughs> um, All right. Can I get hands for that one? <laughs> oh, thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. Oh, sorry. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> no bullying. No bullying. I have to confess I voted more than 10 times. <laughs> 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 so the I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of heavy things in that that could take a, a lot of time. There's a lot. There's a lot in there. Yeah. All right. So I feel like this is a good time for me to announce publicly that I am not sick and that this is in fact <laughs> old old things. All right. So um, the next one is address climate change issues, and that one really was our net zero plan recommendations and some other uh, policies internally for um, uh, environmentally responsible purchases. Can I get hands for this one? All right. Yeah. 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 Counselor Bate doesn't believe in climate change. <laughs> I think 
counting is out she the window. She thinks 95% of scientists are wrong. <laughs> I think the no, other no, yeah. acts are better climate change monitors. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, dear. Okay, well, um, both of those are uh, high priority, so thank you. Um, next goal is build and maintain sustainable infrastructure. Um, the next, uh, the first one, and I'm going to point at it, so I actually read the first one, is address new or improved infrastructure needs, um, which really talks about, I think, one of the bigger ones is the stormwater utility, um, the rec building renovation uh, options, and some other um, initiatives there. So can I get hands for that item? All right. Also, yeah. a lot of heavy hitting things there too. Yes. Sure. So there, there are some things that I think when we come back next week or next meeting, when I come back with this draft plan, there are some things that will be highlighted that will need extra votes. Like the initiatives will need votes for inclusion. And I think those are some of the newer ones that have been brought to the table. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, I think we can work through that no problem. And so the next one is implement long-term DPW infrastructure plans. Uh, again, not saying that this won't happen if it is not a priority. So can I get hands for this item? If you had 11 votes, would you vote for this? <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, was that a hand? I think I'm over. Our strengths need you. <laughs> we'll count them all up afterwards. Anyone who's over 10 will throw out all their eggs. I could be a little excited. Ridiculous. So, the next is continue infrastructure funding strategies. Can I get hands? All right. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Because yeah, uh, one of mine got merged. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw my name in there. All right. Well, all of those then are uh, had a majority vote. Thank you. All right. Well, Last goal. The voted cap is on. Now the voter fraud is rampant. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the most. <laughs> it's not who votes, it's who counts the votes. <laughs> this is the most quotable council meeting I have ever been to. <laughs> Maybe the Delcor is The headline is tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. We haven't right. figured it out. The strategy is if everybody else votes, you save it. You, you, don't, you don't have to oh, you you save it for right. the next that's round. Right. <laughs> that's the flaw with this. System. This is wild. <laughs> okay, all right. Improving public health and safety. The first one is addressing homelessness in the community. Uh, we added the workforce development initiative and the peer support outreach worker to this strategy. Can I get hands? All right. The, the next one I'm sorry. is <laughs> implement regional public safety. I put regional in there twice. It's fine. Implement regional public safety improvements. This includes the CBPSA, Televate Telecom Needs Assessment, um, and Capital Fire Mutual Aid. Again, these things will not happen if you do not vote for them. So can I get hands? Um, you didn't vote for I, I didn't use my chance to say, I figured they have to do all the same things. Well, yes, yeah, that's true. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, the next strategy is provide policing that fits Montpelier's needs, which is really uh, reviewing and considering the uh, police review committee recommendations and what that entails. So there is some budgetary um, impacts that that carries with it. I don't have a total in front of me, but it does have budgetary impacts. Um, so can I get hands for that? And there's a lot in that uh, report. We're having our last meeting, Laura and I to go over public uh, input, and then we'll get it to the council. If it gets a vote. Y'all are funny. So the next one is improving local hazard mitigation, emergency response, and infrastructure. So again, um, these are looking at some of the um, higher cost items identified in the local hazard mitigation um, plan. Um, we are working on a lot of these that we identified here. Um, so can I get hands raised for this one? I'm the only one with hazard in mind. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not 
You and me, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> you, may be, you may be the only one with but I, last, but I do hope that we do that. <laughs> I know yeah, I didn't smoke it, but like, like yes. this is yeah, important. Exactly. Yeah, this is yeah. one of those. We're just throwing it away. Yeah, right. <laughs> the plan you happen. just approved. Come on. 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 There's provide effective mental health response. Um, but that also, again, that's talking about the CIT program and what level of priority of spending you want with that. And the, again, we talked about the peer outreach and social worker programs within the MPD. So that's a little different than before. So can I get hands there? Thank you. And then the last one is the restorative justice um, strategy, which talks about um, incorporating CJC more into our goals and expanding their support. Can I get hands? If it had more. I know, right? All right, so going through um, the goals, I'm gonna just sort of to start at the beginning and say what people voted for, so we can go through that. So under improved community prosperity goal, we had actively supporting economic development with the added caveat of outdoor economy. Um, the next one would be provide the responsible and engaged government, which we're going to workshop. Um, the communication or strategy came out on top there. Along, and now that's it, sorry, I can't read, can't do anything. <laughs> Create more housing as a goal. We had implementing the housing task force recommendations along with actively achieving and increasing available housing units. Under practice good environmental stewardship, we had the promotion of conservation of river, water, and land resources and addressing climate change issues. Under build and maintain sustainable infrastructure, everything passed. So as priorities, we have new and improved infrastructure needs, our DPW infrastructure plans, and our um, infrastructure funding strategies. Under improving public health and safety, we had addressing homelessness in the community. And that one is your priority there. Did that sound right to folks? It does. I also appreciated your comment earlier, Bill, that was like, we're a small organization, like we still hear you yes. on these, you know, so you know, for those of us that voted for things that did not get four votes, like, you know, I, I'm sort of trusting that, like, yeah, you, you've heard us that, like, even within these goals that well, and, and to those be, rise to right. a level. So, yeah. So what's going to happen, I think, is that at the next meeting, we will drop this into a plan. You'll get a chance to weigh in on the initiatives, particularly the ones, the, the newer ideas. Mm -hmm. So, and maybe maybe we'll do the prioritization of the goals in some sort of order. Um, and then you'll get to see the whole plan, see what's in there, how we do this stuff around based on these conversations. And see if that, it's still your plan. Uh, so so uh, what I can also do, and I think will help relieve some, some, I don't want to say the word angst because that's wrong, but just wanting to know what happens with these initiatives, right? So for instance, Beast Program Growth is an initiative under providing community support, right? To residents in need. If FEAST, let's say you didn't vote for that one. Um, FEAST is on our senior center director's work plan. That's a big initiative for her. That's something that I track as her manager to make sure that that's happening because she stated that as a, as a initiative for her, for her work plan. So I can go through these and tell you where they're, they're ending up. If they're not on your strategic plan, where are they going? What are they doing? Are they in a parking lot because there's something that y'all created or are they in someone's work plan? So I'll, I'll turn that around for next time. And so, so but it's also the opportunity just, just uh, I'm just using that as an example. I don't think this would be a real life example, but if on the other hand, this would be your chance to say, we don't really want the peace plan. You know, this is also a chance to, to tell us, you know, I mean, we're assuming things, we have programs in this priorities, but you tell us, you know, there's something in here you don't like, it's your chance to say. <laughs> 
<laughs> Please don't tell us you don't like the fees program. No, no. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have accomplished what I needed for today, honestly. I think what this gives me is an ability to go to staff and say, here's what the um, council's prioritized strategies are. Let's talk about the initiatives and build those out so that we can present that to council for more cohesive discussion about those initiatives. Because I think right now you're right, some of them can move around, some of them are squishy, and it will really help me to have y'all's priority strategies to talk to, to staff about, to turn this around into its full plan. So I have what I need from tonight. If you want to go into further conversation about the initiatives, I have no problems staying and doing that right now too. So that's sort of up to y'all where you're at. Um, uh, yeah, my thought is we should keep moving just in, in general, but um, but there's a couple of comments. Lauren and Jay. So one last uh, pitch for a moving something that might then get four votes. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so we had, I didn't totally see who voted, but the provide policing, which fits Montpelier needs, and then we've got provide effective mental health response. Mm -hmm. Those are like a huge chunk of the Police Review Committee report is a, is like tied to that. So to me, those are kind of one. There, those are some strategies that are mm -hmm. tied to it, or like they would be one and the same. So I thought we might get four votes if, if those were lumped together. Yes. And it's to me like a they're part and parcel of the same. Kind. It is, it's part of providing policing, which fits on your needs, is providing effective mental health response. So just throwing it out there. I I'm seeing a lot of nodding. Yeah, that makes sense. So sure. Who, all right. Do, do we have? Do we actually have four votes? Can we, we get hands for a combined providing policing, which fits Montpelier's needs, with effective mental health response? Yes. Right. Oh wow. Cool. Well, I know that um, really ties very closely. Thank you, Warren. I appreciate that. Yes. I know that ties very closely with Chief's, um, you know, really big push on the CIT program. So thank you. Cool. Uh, Jay. Yeah. Yeah. I I want to move forward on this. I don't want to dig too okay. deep into the details, but I do think, Cameron, one of the biggest challenges as you dig into the initiatives list to kind of come back to us with the staff is like really trying to focus in on action items. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, review this, consider that, um, and, you know, things that, are, that tend to be a little bit more passive. And sometimes, you know, like if it's a bigger picture thing, like you can't, you know, we can't like, fully commit necessarily, but I think if we have things to respond to, like improve the website. It's like, well, what is it, what exactly, does, like let's think about what does that mean? Not that we need to like, do a full analysis and budget analysis, but like, hey, this is what needs to be, <laughs> to be improved around the website. That, I just use that as one example. Yeah, no, that's a good example. So having those things like kind of thought through by by the department heads and staff before you come back, I think will be really helpful for us in terms of prioritizing action items. Okay. So, yeah, Thank thanks. You. Yeah, and I think, so, so just to flesh that conversation out though, I think at least in terms of now, um, the fact that improving the website is really important and you state that, you know, I don't think the council necessarily needs right now to be getting into, you know, vendor we're going to use or what things are going to be on it. It's like you've said this is important to us. And then at some point when we do the budget, we'll come back and say we've looked into this and this is how much we recommend to fix the website. So I think you really want to you know, think of the, the plane landing and you're, you're, you're kind of halfway there now. You're saying here's where, you know, here's which the runway we're going to pick, but then that's kind of it. And, and, and also on that, when we talked about things like consider, you know, I use those words specifically on those, because a lot of those are council decisions. So one of the things we're gonna add in is sort of whose, whose action this is. Okay. So like the housing task force plan, you have to decide at the end of the day, if these are policies. So, so the idea is that you, you, it'll be on your agenda to consider, unless you say, yeah, we're absolutely gonna do these right now. So it's not meant to be squishy. It means that you've gotta come back and, you know, even the, the thing about the social services was sort of a, We've got to decide this and to clarify the role. It wasn't increase it or decrease it. It was make a policy decision. Where some of these are, you know, what we're going to do, and so we can. So we'll try to also figure out which one of these things are sort of council things, mm -hmm. and our staff things, so that we can really focus your time on the council things. 
again, you know, this is a process that I've at least in my mind as going to be on the agenda for another two meetings. Right. I, I think that the next one is to look at initial draft and then sort of get community feedback on that initial draft and then adopt that at the following one. So, um, you know, thank you all for, for this process. I know it can get a little messy, but I think that's like the fun part of having these conversations and deciding um, sort of what what goals you have for the next two fiscal years, really. So um, it really does help us. And I'm very grateful that we're aligning it with the budget process. So I think that'll be very helpful for us. And that was just what I was going to say that I, I really appreciate um, having gone through this last year and now again that this like so sets the stage for the budget process where we're make, committing and making decisions around these action items. Mm -hmm. Whereas before we did it and it was just sort of like, well, let's see what happens over the next six months. And but now we're moving right from this into the into owning the decisions, which I think was a really smart move. And I appreciate um, you know your your thoughts on on and force foresight in making that happen so thank you yeah great okay <clears throat> so you don't need any other vote from us tonight on this because we're I do not it was all just a straw poll really yep. um okay so we are gonna move on then um so because <laughs> I, I anticipate that there is a um executive session on land acquisition um, we're going to jump to the council reports, uh, and so um, Jennifer, just so you know, this is a, maybe you already know this, um, this, this is a time for um, any counselor to share, like, reports out from committees they're on, mm. or there's these upcoming local events that people should check out, or heads up, you know, like, I, there's this thing coming, or, or you know, there was something in the past that happened that was really We're exciting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, and for whatever reason, I just always start with Donna. <laughs> and she's a right-handed person. Zoom. <laughs> Even She's a right-handed person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. But if you don't, if you want to, I can go the other way. I'm ready now. Oh, you're Next so time, good. if you want to go there. This yes, is why I always she feel neglected. You. Um, I mean, everybody seems to always have something to say that's different. I'm amazed that all of us are so so unique and contribute well. I just want to give a heads up of the October 20th council meetings that are going to be joint between Montpelier and Barry. And the Central Vermont Public Safety Authority will be doing a presentation. Our consultant will be here from the Televets report. I'll be redistributing those so you'll all get that. And you'll also get a letter that we got from the Twin City teams, which is Barry and Montpelier Emergency Service staffs came up with recommendations after they read that report. So you'll get that to compare the two. And I really want you to make myself available, call, make an appointment. I'm really glad to go over this 117 page study. <laughs> uh, but the executive summary is really important. And the Twin City team recommendation letter is really important. If you could really put your attention on those two and then go into the report, that would be really good. And it's all about public safety telecommunications. And I'd also like to put on the agenda for the next time is the letter from the young girl, nine years old, that wrote us. Uh, I believe her name is Marcy? Marissa. Uh, Marissa. Marissa uh, Earl Centers, who asked us to consider Halloween. And I thought it was a wonderfully written letter. And I would love for us to respond to her and all the other kids who want to do something around Halloween. Absolutely. It's probably worth talking about. All right, I uh, should have four or five specific recommendations coming out from the Homelessness Task Force. The next meeting with appropriations attached to those, uh, as far as the ARPA funding. So I think that's the probably the most specificity you'll, you'll have seen from the Homelessness Task Force so far. So just keep an eye out for that. Uh, also, I saw council, former Councillor Richardson's first Burlington City Council meeting. <laughs> in, in Kansas, anyone? <laughs> that's it for me. Um, just just one quick thing. Um, you, I don't know that uh, you all will remember, but we've, we've had um, a few folks in the city who have been dealing with some noise issues um, for for a long time. I know Councilor Richardson mentioned it. I've mentioned it in the past, um, and it's been it's we've been supporting them, trying to um, uh, resolve the issue. It's it's been a long road, um, 
and um, we we hired a consultant. This was something that the council approved a few months ago um, to do some testing, um, and we have been trying to work. We've been trying to pinpoint um, the the issues related to the noise, um, and tonight we finally were able to do the additional testing that we needed. Um, we got rained out numerous times. It's been a long road. And so I just um, want to publicly acknowledge Donna Barlow Casey for her perseverance on this. And, and hopefully um, the testing that uh, happens tonight can bring some resolution. It's not, it won't give us necessarily, won't get us to the finish line, but we'll give us some answers about what next steps might be. So I just wanted to, to thank Donna and, the, and the, our constituents who've been working through this issue um, for a long time. That's it. Um, Jennifer, you can feel free to pass too. I, I am passed. Okay. Thank you. Just two things to mention. One, I, I doubt that she's uh, watching tonight, but uh, it was just reported today that our uh, a veteran journalist and former assistant city manager, Sue Allen, was just uh, named uh, the new editor of the Bennington Banner. Oh, wow. So congratulations to Sue. Wow. And second is that uh, many people are aware that uh, as of tomorrow, the general assistance hotel program was due to be terminated and due to uh, thanks to my advocacy by my colleagues at Vermont Legal Aid and other advocates, we were able to get the governor to push back the end of the GA program for 30 days. It doesn't solve the problem, but it gives us more time to advocate for a solution. And I think this is really an object lesson in how uh, concentrated uh, community uh, advocacy can uh, affect policy. Great. Um, just two quick things. Uh, one, it was mentioned earlier, but um, for the police review committee, um, we have had a public comment period and have heard from a number of folks and we do have um, one last meeting to finalize the report tomorrow. So if anyone wants to join us via Zoom 4.30 p.m. tomorrow, um, we'll be you know, looking at the public comments and um, working to address and work through those. Um, so if people wanted to come and explain further or have a last voice, um, that will be uh, where we'll be finalizing the report that then we'll be providing to, to council um, and out to the public. Um, and then only other thing, I have been getting a couple um, kind of queries about how we're going to be making decisions for the American Rescue Plan Act money that is not allocated. And so people have been sharing some ideas of public engagement and stuff. So just looking forward to, I guess at some point, maybe just like the timeline, if that's going to be just right alongside the budget, or do we want to do it differently? So it's not, I know the budget itself is such a big hard thing. Um, <laughs> anyway, I don't know if we want like to, to try to do it on a, on a slightly different track or something to give us a little more brain space. But I also think it's a great, I mean, how often are we able to be like, we've got some money, like what are, what are our best ideas community? And, you know, we just did our strategic planning. So I just know some people are thinking about it and want to be, um, you know, involved and helpful and thinking through how we can, you know, make some good, thoughtful, forward-looking investments for our community. So looking forward to figuring out a good process together. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, did you have something to add? Uh, I just have one question. Yeah, go ahead. I just got another email. The treatment plant odor. I've gotten uh -huh. several complaints about it from people on State Street. I just recently got one from my own neighborhood. Do we have any resolution as to why it seems to have been stronger this summer? And particularly, like even today, we're looking into it. We don't yet, and it is the whole issue of the damping plant. Okay, I don't have something. Okay, thank you. Sorry, no, it's fine. Uh, I have a couple of things. Um, one is that there's uh, gonna be a uh, art opening at the TW Wood Gallery on October 1st. Um, they recently acquired a new uh, painting that was by T.W. Wood. Uh, so just want to let folks know, October 1st, 530, 
Um, you can go check out the, the new painting they acquired, which is pretty cool. Um, second thing, slightly, well, actually, very unrelated. Um, just want to put this out there that uh, one of the things that I am thinking about um, that I feel like I heard from the uh, equity uh, report was the possibility of uh, paying uh, folks for their participation on committees. And so one question that I that I'm thinking about and I'd be interested in in your thoughts on this is how who do we pay and how much do we pay them? Um, and then, uh, you know, I'm picturing like our, our pay is on a separate line on the on a ballot. Do we do it that way? Do we build it in? You have a thought on that? Um, the Social and Economic Justice Advisory Committee was um, discussing that this morning. Oh, okay. um, so there, uh, Shana Casper, the chair of that committee, had started doing some research because Essex has um, oh. is going down this road. They're planning to do it. So we have some lessons learned from um, how they're approaching it. Uh, they're just putting it into place, I believe, going into effect in January. So they're, you know, it's relatively new there too, but they've figured out some ways, you know, who might get it and how to, um, how to structure it. So we have some learnings that we're collecting and, and viewing that as something that we want to like put forward, I think, a proposal to bring to council on. Okay, great. As a part of the budget conversation. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, especially, you know, I, I know we are not in budget season yet, but it is coming. And so I'm anticipating that. Um, okay, I guess that is it for me when we don't have the city clerk here, at least he's not. Oh, he's on the screen. Yep. Oh my God. I've been here the whole time. Here. <laughs> Never taking, mind. Taking advantage of the technology. <laughs> you might as well. This time around, so I can be in two places at once. I just should mention, you know, I was gone for most of the last week. Um, I'm going to be gone for most of the next week. I just can't take two clean vacation weeks in a row because I can't really be gone two weeks. Um, but so we'll have to get caught up on the minutes, which are all done and posted at all those little silly meetings y'all are having. So many meetings. Um, but we'll just have to put them en masse into one of these coming up, but they're, they're getting done. And, but yeah, so don't look for me in the next week. I'm gone again. I'm going into the mountains. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Uh, Bill. Uh, thank, you. thank you all for your time looking through this. Just remind everybody. Just remind everybody, I know we, that, you know, when we first did this, we had someone come in and we spent two really long evenings consecutively, like four or five hour evenings working on this, and then also the staff during those whole days. So we're trying to condense this, especially into, you know, regular other agenda items. So it may seem like it's long, but it's because of the way we're opting to, to do that. So thank you for, for working your way through that. Um, otherwise, I don't know that I have anything specific to report. All right, um, and we're not anticipating coming out of an executive session to take no. a vote. Um, okay, so uh, thoughts on, uh, is there a motion to go into executive session t for the land acquisition discussion? I move to go into executive session. And include the city manager and the parks director. Okay. One VSA, section 313.82. Negotiating your secured in real estate uh, purchase or lease options. There's a motion and a second. Uh, further discussion? Okay. okay. Uh, uh, aye. 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 Okay, and opposed. All right. So we do not anticipate, we will come back into public session, but we will not be taking any formal votes.